Welcome back to National 5 Chemistry, ladies and gents. I'd like to tackle a, a new a section of the course today. I'd like to work on nature's chemistry, otherwise known as organic chemistry, because it's based around molecules containing the atom of carbon, this black one here. Um, I'd like to do four things in this topic, This, sorry, in this video, the next 15, 20 minutes or so. I'd like to run through what you previously should know. I'd like to refresh your memory on just exactly how we go about showing these organic molecules, because if we were to show the proper details, things would get very clumsy. I'd like to introduce you to a new member of the family. And lastly, I'd like to introduce, introduce you to a new concept. It's possibly a new concept that depends how much detail your teacher went into last year, in third year. Right, let's run through previous knowledge first. Um, here are, oh by the way, sorry, the, this is covering basically the work on SQA uh, course spec, pages 48 to 50, and the Scholar PDF, pages 19 to 72, which looks horrendous, but don't worry, Scholar never uses one word where 16 words will do instead. It's not qu quite as bad as it looks. Um, the thing I'd like to run through first um, are the, a, a definition. You are supposed to know what a homologous series is. You're supposed to know how what characteristics the members of this series would have. Homo as in the same and logos as in shape. So basically all the molecules have similar structures to each other. They must have something uh, in common with each other. Similar, I've forgotten how to spell. Similar structures. A similar structural feature. Let's put it that way. It's like a feature. Please excuse me. Similar structure feature. Um, this is how you would recognise a member of this particular series. Uh, just to throw an example at you, I'm sure you can remember from the alkenes, they all had a double bond between two of the carbons. Uh, this is sometimes a higher end chemistry called a functional group. If, you, if I slip that name in from time to time, I just mean how you spot that particular series. So functional... Group. I apologise, I'm trying to do higher at the same time and I'll, I tend to call it that all at the same time. Um, so functional group. Uh, what other things do members of this homologous series have in common? They also have um, similar chemical reactions. Once again, for the alkenes, for example, then they all decolorise bromine water instantly. That word instantly, by the way, very important. So similar chemical reactions. Um, they also have what's called a linear or regular increase in melting and boiling points. If you come back to higher, we'll explain just exactly why that happens. So, um, they have a regular increase in melting and boiling points. If you graph the melting and boiling points, it's pretty much, not quite, I know, don't show it to me, but it's close enough to a straight line. So that was a definition of a homologous series from the last year. You covered, um, at the very minimum, you covered two homologous series last year. The first one were, oh, I do apologise. It's been a while since I've done one of these videos. Something important there that I missed. They, all, they, being all the members of a series, all have what's called a general formula. They all fit a general formula. Uh, the example for the alkanes was if you had N carbons, then you could pause the video and see if you can remember this at this point, of course. How do you calculate the number of H's? This is a horrible maths thing, but if you had six carbons, for example, let's put a real number in that. So if you had six carbons, how many hydrogens would the molecule have? You could draw it all out and fill them all in, um, as I'm going to show you in just two minutes' time, but life's too short for that. And if you have decent memory, hopefully you can remember that you would have 2n plus 2. So whatever number this is, multiply it by 2, which gives you 12, and then add another 2, and it gives you C6H14. Alkanes, folks, are the first homologous series you should have remembered from last year. They are basically the simplest. They are this. This is one, for example, where we have three carbon atoms, single bonds between the carbon atoms, and each carbon atom, of course, has a valency of four. So we add hydrogens in uh, to fill up uh, all the bonds that we require. And we end up with this example being C3H8. Now, uh, this is called the molecular formula. That is one way of showing 
this molecule. Not exactly what you call the most detailed version, but nice and quick. Um, so that's the molecular formula. Sorry, I'm still going to hang these new pens. Um, you could show, of course, uh, the full uh, the full Monty. You could draw one, two, three carbons, and onto each carbon we can add the required number of hydrogens. Because this carbon only has one bond, you need to add three. This carbon's got two bonds, so we'll pop another two hydrogens on here. As I said, carbon always has four bonds, and this carbon here uh, needs another three hydrogens popped onto it. So we end up with that. That is called the full structural formula, because it gives you the full version. It's, it's great. Nothing hidden there. Structural formula. But the problem is, it does take a while to draw it. Uh, there is a halfway house between these two. Um, called a shortened structural formula. No height jokes, please. If you are a member of my class, you will know why that's funny. Um, so there is the shortened, shortened structural formula as well. Um, these are a little bit trickier to deal with, but they're quite handy uh, in showing more details without having to draw all the bonds in. So if we draw a circle around this carbon here, you find it's attached to three other hydrogens. Draw a circle around this one, it's attached to two hydrogens, and draw a circle around this one, it's CH3. So what we can do is we can do um, CH3, and then CH2, and then CH3. Um, which is a heck of a lot faster than this to draw, and also shows you a bit more details. That's why it's called a shortened structural formula. Um, Anything else about the alkenes you require to know? Yes, you require to know that they are CNH2N plus 2. I did mention it in the last uh, video, in the last slide, if you're paying attention. And that is about it. Uh, just since we're here, if you were to burn any of the alkenes, then what you do is rip this molecule apart and you stick each of these atoms to oxygen and you make the oxide. So you make carbon dioxide and you also make hydrogen oxide, otherwise known as water. Um, I think that might be as finished. Oh yeah, the SQA for some reason want you to know that all of these are insoluble in water. That has suddenly popped up in recent years. So insoluble in H2O. In other words, if you had a glass of water, you could bubble um, methane gas through uh, and quite happily, and it would never dissolve in the water. Talking about methane, I think we need to revise, before we move on to the alkenes, we need an extra bit of revision for you. Now, the SQA want you to know the prefixes. In other words, it's the prefixes is not a great word. Uh, they want you to know the names of the hydrocarbon molecules with the number of carbons from 1 down to 8. Um, and they want you to know what its name starts with. That's why it's called a prefix. Now, I, if you're from my class, then you probably remember the way I got you to remember the first four. And then five, six, and seven, and eight go with the shapes, the geometric shapes. A five-sided shape is a pentagon. So the word will start with pent. And if it's an alkane, of course, it becomes pent in. Without that hyphen, by the way, that's just in there. Um, Six-sided shape is a hexagon, so that would be hexane if it was an alkane. Seven is a little bit confusing. Some people forget that it's actually hept, not sept. I think one of them's Latin, one of them's Greek. I'm a bit fuzzy on that. And eight is oct for octagon. So these are all fine if you know your shapes from maths. The first four can become a little bit tricky, which is why I had the ridiculous... Uh, way of saying that monkeys eat peeled bananas. But basically, it's whatever works for you. Uh, you can make up your own little acronym. Please keep it as clean or unclean as you want. Just don't tell me about it. Um, and then that becomes meth. Eth. Prop. And butte. 
So that's another bit of revision from S3, guys. If you're not familiar with that, you should instantly be able to, if I throw any of these at you, you should instantly be able to say, oh yeah, that's got whatever number of carbons in it. If you have to think about it even for a second, you don't know it well enough. Let's have a look at the alkenes now. One of the few times where spelling matters in chemistry. Okay, here's a typical alkene for us. Um, now, what is their special power, uh, their superpower? The superpower of the alkenes is it has a double bond in it. That's the functional group. It's how you recognise one from its structure. Um, so they all have double bonds. A, a very quick reminder, a, when you have sat single bonds like the alkanes, so the alkanes all had single bonds, between the carbons that is, obviously. And we call them S for single bonds, and we describe them as S for saturated. So we describe the molecules with single bonds only as being saturated molecules. These molecules here with a double bond, these are, uh, these are described as being unsaturated. So S for single bonds, S for saturated, these ones are double bonds, so these are called unsaturated. You might have heard of unsaturated and saturated fats. Come back for higher, we'll have a look at a bit more structure too with them. Um, don't know if you can remember this or not, but as you can probably see, if this was an alkane, we would have had C with another H on here, and we would have had C with three H's on the end. We've only got two H's and one H on there, so we've effectively lost two H's from our alkane. And that is why the general formula is now CnH2n. That's it. There's no more plus two on here, because we've lost, we're down two H's. Let's once again do the shortened structural formula. Um, this has got one, two, three carbons, and it's got six hydrogens, of course, from this. We don't even have to count them. So this could be described as C3 H6. That's the molecular formula, and if you're paying attention from the last slide, this would be called prop, because it's got three carbons in it, and of course it's propene now. There is a little bit more to the naming that we'll have to come back to for National 5, but I'll do that in a different video. So C3H6, and we could also do the full, uh, the full version here. So this carbon has got two H's on it. It's joined by a double bond to another carbon, this one with one H on it. And then it's joined to this carbon here, which has got three H's. So full structural formula looks something like that. Possibly worth noting the difference. We tend to simplify things. <laughs> this is the actual true angles that are in these molecules. There is a way of proving that. We're not just going in blind faith. There is a way of proving it, but I'm not going to talk about it here today. And if we do our shortened structural formula again, so if we draw a circle around this, around this, and around this, um, we can do a shortened version of it, which looks like CH2, and then just CH, and then CH3. Some representations I have seen in the past uh, sometimes show the double bonds, but you really don't have to. That one is totally acceptable. The SQA would also like you know would also like you to know that the alkenes are also insoluble in water; they don't dissolve in water. Um, however, they do do a type of reaction called an addition reaction. Alkanes, with an A, do not do these reactions because they don't have double bonds. About all you can really do with alkanes is set them on fire, which is what we've been doing for the last couple of hundred years, and that's why the atmosphere composition is changing. It's not a great plan. Additions? Uh, additions, yeah. Addition reactions. Um, we'll come back to what addition reactions actually are in another video, though. They want you to know that you can add three different chemicals on, and I'll explain what on earth I mean by an addition reaction, and also what you can react it with, and what you make. In the meantime, though, let's have a look at our first new piece of knowledge. A new homologous series, ladies and gents. Brand new family for us to have a look at. And here is an example of one. They are called the cycloalkanes. Now, I've underlined cyclo, because, as you can probably work out, that is their superpower, their structural feature that makes them unique. All the carbons end up linked to each other 
in a circle, a cyclic structure. You notice that, that it's alkanes. That's because there's a single bond only between the, the carbons. Some of you brighter people, of course, will be instantly asking, hmm, does that mean you can get cycloalkenes? Yes, you can. And no, you don't need to know about them. If they ever give you a question in the exam on that, it would be a problem-solving based question and they'd have to show you what cycloalkene looked like. But if you're bright enough, you can probably work it out for yourself. Uh, let's have a look at uh, their properties. Uh, this one here has five carbons and two, four, six, eight, ten hydrogens. So this one is C5H10, which looks suspiciously similar to a, a certain alkene. You could pause the video and test yourself and see if you know what the name of the alkene would be at this point in time. It is, however, not the same as that molecule. This is most definitely not pentene. This is, how do you call it then? You call it cyclopentane. We must stick that at the start just to tell the reader, oh yeah, the carbons are going in a circle and they all have single bonds between them. So cyclopentane, guys. It's a funky shape, isn't it? It is a really funky shape. Um, what does the full structural formula for this look like? It looks like this. If I could draw a better pentagon, that would help. Please remember, as I said before, that all the carbons uh, have got four bonds required. So I've added two hydrogens to each carbon in the ring, and we end up with that. Uh, shortened structural formula of this, not really very relevant, so I'm not even going to bother with it. Um, general formula, CnH2n, identical to the alkenes, as I hinted at before. There is a very good reason for that, by the way. If I was to break this open at the end here and then unravel it, I'm hoping you can see that this would be pentane. One, two, three, four, five. And we are needing an extra hydrogen on here, an extra hydrogen on here. When you take it round in a loop like that, you find you no longer need the extra hydrogens, and that's why you've lost two from the general formula as compared to the normal alkanes. Um, so if I just give you a test tube and said, in this test tube, guys, there's C5H10. What is it? Half the class might say, oh, that's pentene. Another half the class might say, nope, it could be cyclopentane. And that is very true. There is a chemical test, of course. What you can do is you can shake it up with bromine water. Bromine water is uh, this lovely orangey red uh, colour. So if you were to add a few drops of bromine water, which is basically bromine molecules, by the, by the way, dissolved in water. Bromine molecules, when they're, the bromines are attached to each other, are indeed about this colour, a dark orangey red. If you break the bromine molecules apart, and stick them to the hydrocarbon, then you lose the colour. And that is why when you put an alkene in with bromine water, give it a good shake, the colour disappears instantly. However, that only works when there's double bonds. And as we can see, there are no double bonds. There are only single bonds. Once again, pause the video if you want. See if you can tell me how you would describe this molecule. This molecule is described as being saturated. So it will not instantly decolorize bromine water. There'll be no color change with bromine water because there are no double bonds. And that is our new family. Um, ladies and gents, the cycloalkanes. I've taken us back to our first slide here. These were our learning outcomes for this uh, lesson. And this one here, so far we can take all of these hopefully. Uh, this one here is the only thing that I haven't addressed yet. I would like to throw a two molecules at you. I sort of did it two minutes ago, where I showed you, you had C5H10, and I said that can be either pentene, or it can be, just looking at the molecule formula that is, you can't tell by looking at the formula, you could tell by looking at the structure, or it could be cyclopentane. Now, that means these two molecules here have the same molecular formula, but a very different structural formula. So we could draw pentene as one, two, three, four, five. 
you could draw the hydrogens in here. That's pentene. And cyclopentane, as we saw in the last sheet. Let's try and do a slightly better pentagon for you. I apologise for my feeble drawing skills. That's better. So, that means it's new definition time. Can I throw a word at you, please, folks? Iso is Greek for the same or equal. That's why you have an isosceles triangle. Um, and the definition of isomers are molecules which have the same molecular formula but different structural formulas. So molecules with the same chemical or molecular formula, same thing, but different structures. So a nice example of that are a nice example of that is pentene and cyclopentene. Um, and I think that's all I want to finish with today. Have we finished this here? Is that all you need to know about isomers? Not quite. But this is enough of my voice for this video. So I'm going to call a halt there. My next video will be looking at a slightly different and a little bit more complex form of uh, concept for isomers, but I can show you with the Molly mods, which is handy that I've got them. Um, as I said, that's the SQE reference for today. That's the Scholar reference. Um, and if I've missed anything out, I apologise. Okay, thanks for listening. Bye-bye.